So I built some floor to ceiling bass traps for a music studio I'm creating in my spare bedroom. They look professional and unlike any DIY bass trap you've probably ever seen. And they also perform unlike any DIY bass trap you've seen. The best part is they were actually really cheap to build. I built two, one in each front corner of my studio. I would have liked to have built one for all four corners, but the back wall of my room doesn't really have any corners because the architect that designed my house was on crack. I built them with two by fours, scrap plywood, rigid insulation someone was selling online, fabric that was on sale, and one eighth fiberboard. And of course, screws and staples and paint and some other shit. So I started by building what I'll call the frame. I used two by four framing lumber, 10 footers because my ceilings are taller than eight feet, about 112 inches to be exact. But I cut them a little shorter just because I didn't feel like scraping the ceilings trying to fit them in. I ripped off one of the four corners of each two by four at 45 degrees with my table saw. When installed on the wall, this will create a flat surface area for the acoustic fabric and front panel to go. So the most secure way of attaching these to the wall is by screwing them into the wall studs. However, I needed the studs to be the exact same distance from the corner in both corners, which obviously is not the case in most homes. But I'll be fine as long as I get the screws in the top and the bottom plates of the wall framing. Once the two side frame pieces were installed, I took one of the 45 degree off cuts and installed it into the corner. You'll see why in a second. So the insulation I'll be using to trap my base is two inch thick rock wool rigid insulation. Not that fluffy stuff that looks like this that comes compressed in a bag. And this shit is dense. It's heavy like my ex-girlfriend. High density is what you want for base traps. Two inches of rigid insulation has about as much meat as six inches of regular low density insulation. But it only takes up like one third of the space. Now, since I'm making floor to ceiling base traps, I have to stack the rock wool on top of each other. So I created a little template out of cardboard and then traced the template onto scrap plywood. I then cut these platforms the exact size for the rock wool to sit on. Then I cut out supports for the platforms and screw them in at 48 inches and at 96 inches. Now, it's time for the rock wool. There are all kinds of methods on the internet for creating base traps. And when you research, you will learn from different sources that the exact opposite information is true. It's kind of confusing and it's quite the rabbit hole to go down. Here, I am not building what some people call super chunk base traps, which are basically corners filled entirely with low density insulation. I've built those in the past and honestly, I didn't find that they were superior at absorbing the deeper bass frequencies. The way I see it is bass is always affected by its corresponding airspace. You see this in construction of subwoofers. You see this in soundproofing. So in my opinion, having an air gap behind my bass traps will make them more effective at absorbing bass. So as you can see here, I am layering two bats of insulation to create four inches of rigid rock wool absorption, leaving plenty of airspace behind. Then I screw in the platforms for the next row of rock wool, and I repeat this step until both corners look something like this. Lastly, I cut horizontal blocks to help keep the rock wool from moving around or falling out and to provide more backing for the next step. Now, it's time for the fabric. I bought some breathable fabric that was on sale at my local fabric store. I believe it was about 54 inches wide, which was just enough to cover the base traps if I cut it in half. So I did with my scissors. Then just starting at the top corner, I just slowly pulled and stretched and stapled, making sure that the fabric remained as tight as possible. I think the biggest noticeable difference between an amateur looking base trap and a professional looking base trap is how well the fabric is installed. Then I rolled a lint roller 
over the whole stretch to remove any debris and dust. Now, most people would wrap their base traps in fabric and call it a day, but I'm gonna take it one step further. One really long, tedious, painful step further that I regretted an hour in. I'm going to build and install a perforated fiberboard panel over top of the fabric. And I'll explain why while I randomly draw out my design. So there's two things that you don't want in a studio room. You don't want zero acoustic treatment, but you also don't want too much. Too much acoustic treatment with zero reflections can leave a room sounding dead and unnatural, like the middle of nowhere. The lower the frequency, the more sheer volume of material it takes to absorb it, making bass more difficult to absorb in a studio than the higher frequencies. I want these bass traps to absorb as much low frequencies as possible but just with fabric over top, they are going to absorb all of the higher frequencies that hit them. And I don't want that. By installing a 1 8 thick panel of perforated fiberboard where like 50% of it is holes, my theory is some of the higher frequencies will pass through the holes and be absorbed, but a lot of them will be reflected back into the room. Whereas the deeper frequencies will pass through both the holes and the solid fiberboard. So doing this, I'll be able to try as much bass as I can while not making the room sound dead. Plus, they are gonna look really cool. Now, I just have to cut out the holes in my design. And if I had a giant 12 by 12 CNC machine, this would be so easy, but I don't. So I have to do it manually. So first, I thought I could just cut out the shapes with a sharp knife, but very quickly I realized that that wasn't going to work. So then I taped both pieces together so I didn't have to do this tedious cutting twice. And I tried using an oscillating saw, which worked, but was also very tedious and a huge pain in the ass, not to mention prematurely dulling very expensive oscillating saw blades. So next I just put some scrap plywood underneath and made the majority of the cuts with a circular saw, and then just finished up the ends with the oscillating saw. And this proved to be the best method, although it still took hours to complete. And I breathed in a lot of dust. But finally, I finished. So I just sanded all of the rough parts off in preparation for paint. Now, I wanted this fiberboard to look like it was part of the wall, so I wanted to paint it with the same paint I painted the walls with, and I wanted to use a roller, giving it the same texture as the walls. But what I should have done is just sprayed it, even with a can of spray paint. It would have been so much easier to get all of the little nooks and crannies, because rolling this was very difficult. It was a huge pain in the ass to get into all the hard to reach spots without globbing paint everywhere. But now it's time for the final step, installation. I very carefully held up and screwed the panels in place, the smallest one at the top. I then evenly spaced screws along the perimeter, giving it somewhat of a studded look. And this is how it turned out. And the best part is this is only the first step. I still have to make acoustic panels, I'm gonna make diffusers, and I'm gonna make an overhead cloud. So if you wanna see me complete this music studio, you should definitely subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.